Alright, ready? And I have no idea about doing this. I've never done this before. Guess we got to try though. I will admit it, I don't act like I do. <laughs> it's a fire wrench, it'll get real hot. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing something right. Well, it ain't that quite that car on fire. Big calamity flame. Calamity flame. Calamity up in flames. This here road, but, um, I'll fire that other well, the only thing about it, if you're heating red with it, it's a cutting tip. If you even touch that, oh, it'll it. it burn. <laughs> yeah, so this is more heat, way more heat, quicker. <laughs> we don't know how to use this torch. I even looked it up last night. Still don't know how to do it. So I'm just gonna come up here and help yeah, me. Training station one yeah. <laughs> Heating torch one on one. Here you go. Well, if you'll heat it, I'll get on there and crank it. Well, we can do that too. Yeah, that way. You gotta watch it know where you're gonna put it though. Well, That's I just need it to move in about a half inch, and then it should be good. You already got pressure on it? Yeah. But when, once it starts to turn red. Let me do that and you get on We got fuel, we got. Once it starts to turn red, I'd get Yeah, we gotta heat, heat all four of them at the same time. Yeah. But, this puts out a lot of fire. So when it don't get orange, you ain't got enough to settle in. Yeah. No matter which torch head it is, you see that feather in the middle, yeah. you want to bring it back. Okay? So don't worry. It's nothing. That's called a neutral flame. So if you cut it back anymore, you'll hear it, you'll hear yeah. it start. No matter how much you put on it, you put a bunch more on it. Bring it on back the same way. But you can hear it forcing through that tip. That's a lot of fire. Oh, look at that. See how fast it gets on? I couldn't get through there. Yeah, that other tip's too small, too. That's all the road, man. Go ahead and flip it there, man. Got a little chain fall in there pulling pressure on it. Headers are a little bit wide, so we're going to pull them in just a little bit on this side. But moving up. Get red. How far you want it to go? Get them where you want them. Pull. That should be good. You got about a good inch right there. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, now see, that's what I couldn't get that somebody should do right there. The we're, just, we're amateurs with that. I know. I ain't know what the fuck I'm I, doing. I, I, know. <laughs> I know what it's like to have plenty of ambition. Oh, no, 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 we no, we, no. we, we probably do that for three minutes. Yeah. Then we cut it off and then try again. Y'all see how I got them all nice and toasty black with not no oxygen. Uh, what did I have? We no weakened, oxygen. Them. We weakened them for him. Yeah. Yeah. I got them warm. Yeah. I got them started. Too, too much, too <laughs> much <laughs> acetylene. Whatever it was, it was smoking. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. She's way away from them now. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Is the other one like that? The other one actually appears a little better. <laughs>
It's hot as a dog feeder, I think. Yeah, that should be good. It's a little warm, ain't it? <laughs> Header being in 101. There wasn't no way I was going to do that with a piece of pie. Yeah. Well, no, it took, he still had to pull on it pretty good in them orange. Yeah. Well, it, pulling it and holding it's the key yeah. to it. Yeah. I probably could have pulled it, but not held it in place for that long. You know, That's why there ain't nothing in the car. Or or anyway. There ain't nothing in the car. There ain't nothing in the car. Well, nothing in the Thumbs up. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Really, really, really Shoot good. Yeah. Back, go ahead and back it off. Say, put 57 chevy headers on a 64 Nova. <laughs> big tube, <laughs> big tubes, yeah. Them, them was a big tube right there. He didn't want to take them off. I told him to use ones on the truck, and he's like, and make horsepower. I said, well, leave them on there. <laughs> Thanks, Gary Fox. Let me see how much. All right, I'm just going to put the fuel pump. The fuel pumps are on the, on the 64 Calamity Jane. Let's see if it's We'll run the fuel line. This little dookie fuel line is out of here. That's garbage. You gotta run three eighths or half on anything with two carburetors or any kind of hot rod. You gotta be able to get that fuel. Look right there, my fuel pump. And my filter. That fuel pump, it was one of the ones in that box of stuff I got from the swap meet that I said I rebuilt. Uh, there was about six of them in there and out of the six I rebuilt them and got four of them to running pretty good. That one runs awesome. The other the other three run, but they're not great. I still got to clean them up a little more. But that one right there is going to work perfect. Anyway, I'm going to mount it right there. So I scratch with my finger in two little spots. It's going to hang. I was a little bit weary about putting it anywhere near the rear end, but it's got to be close to that to this gas tank. So it should be fine up there. I don't really plan on the rear end completely coming apart and going up and hitting it, which it, it'll still be out of the way if it does. Now I'll just run my hard fuel line out over onto the outside edge of the frame and all the way up to the front. So I'll that's one more line or something like that to keep it real 60s because that stuff works good. And I think Dad's got a roll of it somewhere that he brought from uh, his work. That's going to throw it out. They said he could have it for like 30 bucks. So that's not bad. But that's what I'm doing right now today. So I'll tune back in here in a second. To get these holes drilled. All right. There it is. There's rear end. See, it ain't even got. I ain't even got no load in the shocks, and this is all the way compressed. So it's up on the jack. So there ain't no way that things ever gonna come up high enough to hit. Unless something breaks. I wonder if you can even hear me. I got that fan going because it's like 95 degrees out here. But, uh, so yeah. It's going to get me a 90. Comes out right there. These are all furnace fittings, by the way. You, you can buy them at Lowe's. That's what we do almost all our fuel plumbing with is furnace fittings. Because they're cheap and you can get them. And it's better than AN fittings because AN fittings are like 9 to 30 bucks a piece. Forget that folks can't do stuff like that. So we use furnace fittings. At Lowe's, I gotta do is flare them, and the hard line goes right into them and work perfect. Because you can't have uh, uh, propane leaking in the house because they kill you, so they gotta be good and sealed up tight. So that's what we use. But, and I use one of them little thread joiners right there to go from the filter to the pump, come out of the gas tank, through the filter, and into the pump, and then across and up to the front. To you and it Fuel line. But I'm gonna go see if I can find me a 90, come out of there, then I'll start running my fuel line all the way up to the front, get, get up to where the regulator is, and then go from there. But that's gonna work, that's gonna clear. I'm also gonna fix my air shocks. I was on here looking, I got the adapters to go from here, though I wanted to go up and run them individually, but for right now, I could just run back here to that single and then run them like that. I don't like running them all in the same, I like to do them individually, that way I can preload one side. Or if one side's a little lower than the other, I can bump it up. But that's just going to have to do for now. So, come back in here in a little bit and get a little more done. All right, see this flare tool kit? Just clamp that around a piece of, of uh, tubing. 
Take this, put around it, twist it down until it flares out. So you got that flare, and then that flare butts up like that. And then you lock it all down, and it's good seal. I hadn't done one in a long time. That's pretty good for the first try in forever. Not bad. That's all you do. That's how you do all of it, just like that. Boom. And you got hard line. All right, you can see, see these things right here. The thing is, uh, mom got them from Volvo. Mom used to be the manager of a Volvo. And they shut down and was getting rid of all the stuff and she got a bunch of bags of these. And they absolutely work great for holding all your wiring, all your fuel line and everything in. I just got them. So you run a little self-tap through the frame. And then you can slide everything in, take that self-tap back loose, and put the washer and everything on the outside and clamp it down. It'll hold everything good and tight. So I'm just putting it where it'll hang now because I still got to do my battery cables and all my wiring for the pump and everything else. And all the wiring for the tail lights and headlights and all that stuff's going to go back through here. So I'm going to leave it loose, but you can see what I'm doing. Just take that fit and start with your hard line. It's a little bit, little bit of time. Working my way up towards the front of the car. Comes out. on the outside of the frame. That way if you think it breaks under the car, it won't damage the fuel line. All the way up. Then into this joiner. Right there. And that comes up. And out is going to go to my regulator, which will be mounted right here somewhere. Something like that. And then it'll feed out to my carburetors. But first I got to cut this put my plate in there and run a brace up to there so all that's real good and stiff. Then I'll mount my regulator and then do the rest of the fuel line. That's what I'm doing so far. I'm gonna go here and get me a cutting wheel. Start slicing. All right, so now I said I was gonna put plate and stuff back here on the firewall where it looked like they had patched something up. Found out what they patched up. So that, that's what they patched up. So I'm gonna re-weld this fix that then put my plate see these these plates are already cut out for me I'm gonna put those plates over top of that then brace it to this then everything will be one big solid piece of metal and I mean it'll, it, it's adding weight to the car but it's adding weight in places that really need some help because look at that that's just plus my down bars is gonna come off of that down to the frame so it really has to be strong the other side's not bad it's not like this but it looks like something pushed through or it just rusted through and they tried to fix it. But this is what eats up time having to go back and fix other people's stuff. But I mean, at least they tried to fix it. I'd give them that. Everything was pop riveted together, which we've done before. But I can't be willy and coming down with pieces of sheet metal pop riveted together. No, no, I gotta have some good grade steel. Pull that up and then mount my regulator. Mount my regulator probably about right here. Then I'm gonna run some hard line across. So I got that coming out. Just one one four inch piece of rubber line across. That's all the rubber line that'll be in the car. So that'll have to pass take a Super Chevy. If I make it Super, I'm not trying to make it Super Chevy, but one day when I go to Super Chevy, me and Dad are racing together, making money. That's what I'll be doing. Super Chevy and it has to pass. So that's the plan. All right, I got the plate all welded in there. It's, I mean, it's real good, and so I'd hit it, but it's real hot. So, they're all welded in. The wind's blowing real bad today, so it's blowing the gas away from the welder, so it's kind of hard to weld. But I got good penetration all the way around. I only did two places, about two inches on the bottom, because it, all this, it don't need all the way across. But now I'm gonna shoot that black, mount my regulator, and finish doing my fuel line. That way I can at least say I got something done today. Well, I mean, that's a big deal. I'm going to do that, then I'm going to fix my air shocks, then I'm going to call it. But there it is. That was a big deal. That whole thing was rotted out. It's good and solid now. There ain't no way it's going to bust now. Ain't going to bend it. Ain't going to break it. It's all good. So I'm going to finish. I'm going to shoot some paint on that, and then I'm going to mount my regulator and fish my fuel line. We'll tune back in here in about 20 more minutes, 30 minutes. So, and that's how my down bars are going to be right there. Maybe I'll 
I'll turn them up a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get the headers on and off and whatever else I'm gonna do, pull the motor in and out. Things should clear like that. I was thinking about going ahead and just tacking that in place. That way I can run my regulator and rest of the fuel line and, and know exactly where everything's gonna be. I got that mocked up. I didn't tack it in. I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the fuel line and have that done. I wanna go ahead and weld that in there, tack it in, but I ain't got enough time today, so I'm just gonna pull that out, set it back here. Everything's cut to work and the matches make both sides the same. Because I still gotta put the the brace plate on the other side just like I did over here. So I'll just wait and do all that in probably Saturday. But I wanna go ahead and finish the fuel line. That's what I come out here to do, I need to finish that. Like Dad says, one thing at a time, I, my brain wants to jump from one thing to the next. It's hard to do. But I'll finish the fuel line and that'll be done. And I can mark it off my list. And then I'll do my down bars later this week or Saturday. All right, I got it all done. Right here, it's going to come out. Go in right here and go up to my fuel pressure gauge. So it comes in, goes out, across. And a little piece of rubber line into my little fuel log. See, just look at stuff. My thumb is so sore from bending that half inch stuff with my finger, but it's all bent now and it's. That's where it's gonna grow. I'm gonna have to get me a bigger piece or a fresh piece of fuel line right there. Cause that stuff's so dry, it don't really want to flex much to slide all the way up on there. But that's why I'm gonna do that. It's the only way I know that it would work good. But I can just take it all loose right here, take the intake off, carbs off, just pull the distributor, pull the motor, whatever, and leave all that right there. But all in all. For a true 60s guesser, it don't look that god awful. I'd end up doing something different than this. I don't know. That works. I probably could have just come straight out with a fitting with um, some prongs on it, have one piece of rubber line go all the way up here, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. I gotta clean all this stuff right now. But that's done. Fuel line setup is done. <laughs>